It's overtime on Sports Radio 1067, The Fan. Final seconds down to the Verizon Center. Washington trying to rally as they were trailing, trailing the Pacers. They were up big in the fourth and then blew it, and now they're trying to rally back. I believe it's a one-point game less than a minute to go. All right, joining us now on the Mitsubishi Electric Heating Hotline from GlobalBasketball.com. Kevin Russell joins us to talk a little NCAA tournament. Good evening, Kevin. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. How about you, Bill? Yeah, doing good. Hanging in there. Excited for these games uh, tomorrow. Let's go ahead and start out in the West region. Out there, they'll be playing in L.A. It'll get underway tomorrow, 747. Number one, Wisconsin. Number four seeded, North Carolina. And I've said if there's one team that I think that might be able to catch Kentucky on a bad night other than Wisconsin, I think it would be North Carolina because they got enough big guys to throw at them if Kennedy Meeks is back. But talk about this matchup. Does North Carolina have enough without Meeks to be able to slow down Frank the Tank in Wisconsin? Well, I think they do. And, I mean, I'll be honest, I did pick them originally in, in a bracket that I picked, uh, filled out to go to the Final Four, and I just thought they were peaking at the right time. I mean, you look at uh, – they played Notre Dame in that first half of the ACC championship game unbelievably well, and it took a great effort by Notre Dame and the Irish to come back and beat them. So you take that loss away. I mean, they played well in that game from, you know, 35 minutes. It was just a nice five-minute stretch from Notre Dame. North Carolina is playing very well going into the tournament. I think, like you said, they have the big guys that can guard Kaminsky. Um, and I just think they score the basketball very well. I mean, you look at Wisconsin, and obviously I followed the Big South for a while, so I knew a lot about Coastal Carolina, one of the teams that Wisconsin had played in the first round. Coastal Carolina put up 72 points against this Wisconsin team. What's to say North Carolina cannot put up 85 or 90? And if they do that, Wisconsin's going to have a tough time keeping up with the Tar Heels. Yeah, they knocked off Oregon in a, in a much better defensive game for them, uh, holding the Ducks to just 65. And Oregon is, again, kind of like North Carolina, maybe not as talented, but Oregon a team that likes to get up and down the floor, and Wisconsin did a pretty good defensive job on them. Um, you look at the uh, other side, the bottom part of that bracket, six-seeded Xavier, got a little bit of a break with Georgia State knocking off Baylor in the first round. They took care of the Panthers there in round number two taking on Arizona, and a lot of people like Arizona to get by whoever comes out of that first game of the evening between Wisconsin and North Carolina. Talk to me about what the Musketeers have to do to beat Arizona. Well, you know, Chris Mack's done a great job in his first six years there taking them to three three Sweet 16 appearances. I think, you know, everyone, no one's really given Xavier enough credit. They played in a tough conference um, in the Big East, obviously with Villanova. Um, and I heard Jay Wright talking about today. He thinks Xavier can give Arizona a game, but he said the key for them is that they can't have that five, six-minute scoring drought, which has plagued them at times throughout the season. I think in the Big East final against Villanova, they had like a seven-and-a-half or eight-minute stretch where they didn't score a field goal. Arizona plays a lot of close games, so if you can avoid that five, six, seven-minute drought, Xavier can be right in it. And Xavier's been here before, too. Don't think, you know, Xavier, they're never in the Sweet 16. Like I said, They've been there three out of the last six years. So this is a team with Sweet 16 experiences and a coach that has been there before and won some games. It's amazing. On the other side, Arizona, they won the Pac-12 tournament this year. First time in like over a decade that they actually pulled that off. I think a lot of people would have thought they had won it two or three times in that span because they always seem to be up there in the top 25. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? You know, when I fill out a bracket, I look at, you know, those West Coast teams, and we haven't had a West Coast team in the Final Four since UCLA about, I think, seven or eight years ago. Obviously, they went three straight years, but it's just, I don't know if it's because they're playing in a different time zone or what it is, but for some reason, those West Coast teams struggle um, to get to a Final Four. So, to be honest, I think Arizona might win, but I don't like them as much in the next round as, as many people do. I think Wisconsin or North Carolina, one of those two teams will really be a tough matchup for the Wildcats if they can get by Zayden. 
Talking with Kevin Russell of GlobalBasketball.com. You can follow him on Twitter. KTR Global Hoops is how you can get his information there. Moving up to the Midwest, the other region that will get underway tomorrow. The first game there will be, as they play in Cleveland, what I think may be the best game of the night tomorrow, and that's number three Notre Dame taking on the seventh seed Wichita State. Of course, the Shockers doing the number on Kansas. I thought they were a bit underseeded at a seven. I think they've got a shot against Notre Dame if the uh, if the Irish don't guard tomorrow. And we've seen them have stretches like they did against North Carolina, where they just refuse to guard anybody. No, I agree, and you know I agree with the underseeding too. I think you know Wichita State for most of the year was a top. 10 or top 15 team, how they were a seven seed really doesn't make any sense because the committee was basically saying they were the 24th to 28th best team in the country, which I think we all know is false after what they did um, to Kansas. But I, I was talking about this game earlier. I think North Carolina is playing, or not North Carolina, sorry, Notre Dame is playing for their coach. Obviously, everyone knows the story with Mike Brain as mom. Right. So I think there's a motivational factor there. And I think with Wichita State, even though they're trying – to downplay the fact that they beat Kansas, I think they might have an emotional letdown in this game. I think they got so fired up um, to beat their in-state rival Kansas and prove that Kansas should want to play them you know, every year and make that a rivalry. I think this could be a letdown game for the Shockers. And, and I like Notre Dame to, to take this one, not with ease, but I think they'll win by five or six points. Kevin, how much of a, dis- of a distraction is it where you see Alabama basically coming out and saying, hey, Greg Marshall, here's a check for $3 million. If you need another one for another million, we'll do that as well. Just come be our coach when he's got to prepare for the Fighting Irish and all these rumors are out there about him being the number one guy for the Alabama job. I mean, he kind of dealt with it a little bit last year. I, I know Wake Forest had some interest in him, and there were a couple other schools that maybe not as – you know, out in the public saying, we'll give you this much amount of money. But everyone's got to know that Greg Marshall is going to be the top candidate on, a, on a, some list for high major programs just because of what he's done at Winthrop and what he's doing now at Wichita State. I, I think this team has the experience, though, uh, Wichita State. They had four out of their five starters played in a Final Four two years ago. Um, so I think they'll use that experience to kind of get over the distractions. But, again, I just think emotionally they're going to have a letdown after – Basically taking it to the Jayhawks pretty good uh, last Saturday night. All right, the other game of the evening in Cleveland, Kentucky taking on West Virginia, the Mountaineers. Some of their players saying, hey, congratulations. 36-0 and is pretty good. You're going to be 36-1 and when it's all said and done. Uh, West Virginia, how much of a chance do you give them to take down Kentucky tomorrow night? Well, I think they play defense, which is great against Kentucky, but Kentucky can score against anyone. I mean, you look at what – uh, Kentucky did. They didn't play a great game the other night against Cincinnati, only shot 32% from the field, but they won by 13 points. Um, West Virginia struggles to shoot the ball. They're 285th in the country coming into the tournament in field goal percentage. That's not a recipe for success when you're trying to pull an upset. You know, the key to an upset, especially of this magnitude, would be to shoot the three ball well and to make any other open shots you have. When you shoot the ball 285th in the country, that means you don't make your open shot. Um, so they're going to have to play unbelievable defense, and to be honest, they're going to need to get the assistance from the referees. We talked about that Maryland game the other night, and West Virginia is a team where it's tough for the officials because they call a foul on one play, they could very easily call it on the next right. They foul a lot, and I think the style of play, it basically comes down to whether the officials want to take complete control of the game or want to let them play. The officials let them play, I'll give West Virginia a shot because that's the style they want to play, but if the officials have a you know quick whistle. It's going to be very tough for West Virginia. Could, could either Notre Dame or Wichita State give Kentucky uh, a tough time? But obviously, that would be a rematch between the Shockers and Kentucky if they both advance. Uh, Kentucky took them out last year in the round of 32. I think Notre Dame could because I, I don't think people give Notre Dame enough credit for the defense they play this year. I think everyone kind of sees them as an offensive team that doesn't play defense, but you look back to the end of that Butler game, they made key stop after key stop, that block with two seconds left mm-hmm. by Connaughton. This is a team that maybe they don't play defense great for the first 35 minutes, but when they need a stop, they can get a stop. And when they need a three on offense, they'll get a three on offense. They had two or three clutch threes in overtime the other night against Butler that really sealed the deal. So I think this team in crunch time is very good in Notre Dame. So I think Notre Dame would have a better shot. 
I still wouldn't pick them over the Wildcats. All right, let's move over to the East, the the bracket that will get underway on Friday, and it is as wide open as there can be. Number one and number two are out. You've got number three, Oklahoma, taking on seven-seeded Michigan State, who got the win over Virginia. Again, a rematch one that Michigan State uh, was able to beat the Cavaliers for the second straight year. Uh, Tom Izzo and company doing it again in March. How do you like this game playing out between Oklahoma and the Spartans? You know, I was in Charlotte on Sunday to watch Michigan State beat Virginia, and I just wondered you don't bet against Tom Izzo in March. I mean, if for some reason his guys just, by the time March comes around, buy into his style of play. Uh, Travis Trice in those first four minutes was unbelievable. Um, he did slow down a little bit, which is a little bit of a concern um, because he is kind of hot and cold. So if he has a cold game, can Michigan State find other scoring? Um, Denzel Valentine uh, only had four points in that game if they still, still were able to beat um, UVA. Um, Oklahoma is also a team that's very reliant on the three-point shot. They shot 50% from the field um, in their last game against Dayton, but in their first matchup uh, in the round of 64 against Albany, they were only 7 of 24 from three and really had to hold on against Albany. So it's kind of a game where if Oklahoma's off, I think Michigan State could run away with this one, but at the same time, Michigan State only has three legitimate scores and um, Trice and, and Valentine um, so I, I don't know. We'll see, but I, I don't bet against Tom Izzo in March. I think Michigan State will pull this one out. Yeah, I saw Oklahoma up close and in person when George Mason played them earlier this year, and they, if they get going on offense, uh, the Sooners can uh, can rip off 12, 14 points in quick fashion. Uh, the top side of that bracket, an ACC matchup, two of the five ACC teams in the Sweet 16. North Carolina State surprising everyone by knocking off Villanova, and they get Louisville, who I think people were a little surprised that they were able Able to handle Northern Iowa as easily as they did. Yeah, you know, I was one on the bandwagon of Northern Iowa to the Final Four, actually, so kind of hurt my bracket. But um, yeah, I mean, Louisville again, just another coach that knows how to get his team playing the right way come March. And Rick Pitino, um, when you look at this matchup, it's a toss-up. I mean, because NC State did beat Louisville by nine earlier in the season, seventy-four to sixty-five. Um, NC State has a bunch of pros on this team. That was one of the things you heard after the Villanova game is that. NC State probably had the more talented roster in terms of future pros. So this is a team with a ton of talent. It's whether or not they want to show up. Um, I've seen them lose to Wofford, lose to Wake Forest. I've also seen them beat Duke and now beat Villanova. So which NC State team is going to travel up to the Carrier Dome to take on Louisville? We just don't know. So I'm going to go with the more known commodity, and that's Louisville and Coach Rick Pitino. All right, let's finally uh, take care of the South region. Number one seeded Duke taking on the fifth seed Utah Blue Devils. A lot of people thought that they had a fairly easy time of it there in the South anyway. Uh, the number three seed goes out. The number six seed goes out. But they're playing a Utah team that uh, took care of Georgetown. Um, didn't struggle as much with Stephen F. Austin. I thought that they would, and I had Austin actually beating Utah in the first round. But here they are in the Sweet 16. This looks like it's just going to be a coronation for the Blue Devils. Yeah, I mean, Duke was extremely impressive against San Diego State the other night. However, the one thing that I noted was they were hitting a lot of shots and not being aggressive going to the basket. Now, whether or not that was just because they were all feeling it from the, the floor and they were able to take jump shots and rhythm, I don't know. But the key to watch is Utah took 32 foul shots against Georgetown the other night. If they take 32 foul shots mm. against Duke the, uh, on Friday, that means Duke's going to be in some foul trouble. And I think we all know now Duke is very short in terms of rotation, only eight deep, and I don't know how much faith you have in, uh, in Plumlee to come off the bench. So if Utah can go to the basket, draw contact, and pick up you know, anywhere from 25 to 30 foul shots, that could be the recipe for success of an upset. Because if you get Okafor in foul trouble or you get Emile Jefferson in foul trouble, there's no one to come off the bench for Duke. And So I think Duke's going to have their problem in this game because Utah also has two seven-footers who can score inside. So Duke's got to be very, very careful about avoiding – committing silly fouls out on the perimeter and really limiting how much Utah can get inside. In the early game Friday in Houston, number two seeded Gonzaga taking on UCLA, a team that a lot of people didn't even think should be in the tournament. They took care of uh, SMU in the first round on a questionable goaltending call at the end of the game and then ran away from UAB. Do you like the Bruins' chances to move on a West Coast matchup there in the South region in Houston? No, I don't. I like Gonzaga. I think this is the best team that Mark Few has had out on the West Coast, and I think he's going to prove it against UCLA. I think they really want to send a statement to UCLA that they are the premier program on the West Coast and not UCLA who got in 
somehow by the, the selection committee's graces. But um, UCLA shoot, doesn't shoot the ball particularly well um, consistently. And Zag, on the other hand, is the number one um, in the nation in terms of field goal percentage at over 52%. So I think if you look at the law of averages, Gonzaga shoots the ball consistently well. UCLA does not. I like Gonzaga. All right, and in the Final Four, who do you have winning it all? Are you on the Kentucky bandwagon, or do you see somebody able to knock them off before the uh, final in Indianapolis? Well, you know, I, I had Duke all along over Kentucky in that final, and I just think Duke is going to be able to pull it off. I think this is one – year where Duke is not completely reliant on the three-point shot. They actually have that inside presence and the ability to go to the basket, and they have that shut-down defender in Justice Winslow. You know, and hearing Grant Hill talk about Justice Winslow the other night just kind of cemented to me that he is the, the, basically the glue factor on this team and the guy that makes this team run. If Justice Winslow plays defense like he's capable of and like we've seen in the first two games, I think this team has the ability to stop uh, Kentucky in that powerhouse of the team. I just think Duke has too many weapons who can shoot the three ball, who can go inside. I like Duke over Kentucky. All right, very good. Kevin, we appreciate the time tonight. Enjoy the games this weekend, and uh, everybody should go check out globalbasketball.com. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, thanks so much, Bill. I appreciate it. There he goes. Kevin Russell again. Follow him on Twitter, KTR Global Hoops. We'll come back, wrap things up right here on 106.7 The Fan. Breaking news, sports blog, podcast, and more. We've got all your D.C. sports covered online at 1067thefandc.com. Ultimate Fighting Championship returns to the Patriot Center April 4th as number one ranked contender Chad Money Mendez takes on number four ranked Ricardo Lamas. Listen to Chad Dukes versus the world to win tickets. For details, visit 1067thefandc.com slash contest. As an entrepreneur, you're always on the go. So turn your mobile phone into a business.